Hey everyone, welcome to another free QTP tutorial brought to you by www.qtptutorial.net. I wanted to thank everybody for joining us here today. We are extremely excited to bring you another tutorial and teach you how to use QTP and become amazing automation engineers. Let's go ahead and get started right away because I don't like to waste time. Today, we are going to explore the latest version of Unified Functional Tester, or commonly referred to as UFT. So, some of you may have already seen the video where I downloaded UFT and I installed it. I created a whole video for that, so if you didn't catch it, go watch it. And today, we're going to explore some of the features that I have enjoyed about UFT. I will show you guys how to use it and what I really think about it after about two weeks of experience with it. But the first thing is first, we have to figure out what the heck is UFT? Well, UFT is a conglomeration of two of HP's former tools. One of them is now referred to as API test, which used to be known as service test. This was used for testing web services. And the other one is now called GUI test, which used to be known as QTP. This was QTP version 11 at the latest. And then now it's known as GUI test. And it kind of makes sense. I like this naming convention because it tells you that now UFT is capable of testing API and it's capable of testing GUI. So it's a combination of both. And the concept is that you can test web services while the application is getting built and then you can test the UI as soon as the application is ready. Great concept. So first thing is first, I want to show you guys how to open UFT. We can double click this icon right here. This is what it looks like. HP Unified Functional Testing. I'm going to double click it. It's going to open up and we will take a look. Since I have a trial version, it tells me that my license will expire in 21 days. Okay, so no problem. Web add-in is the only one I want. And you guys can already see this intro is already looking a lot better than QTP used to look before. And here it is. This is the starting screen for the UFT. As you guys can see, it's extremely different. I think what UHP wanted to do here was they went in a completely different direction. They wanted to make everything more sleek a lot more user-friendly, a lot more intuitive to use. And I think that they were good in accomplishing that task. Because to me, everything is kind of the same as it used to be, but some things have changed. And the major thing that has changed is now you may notice there's this thing called the Solution Explorer. And the concept is that whatever project you may be working on, you can store it in a solution. And those solutions can be utilized as kind of just a project, right? And under that project, you will store everything. So let me show you that. I'm opening up, I created a solution before I called it QTP tutorial. And here is the solution. And now, as you guys can see, under this solution, I can start adding things, such as tests, business components, and so on. And the test will be an API test or a GUI test. Check it out. I'm going to create one just for us. Let's call this. I'm going to change the location. I don't like this location. I'm going to put it here. And check it out what happens, guys. Now my solution has three tests. And you can keep adding to them. And so, for example, you know, if this was a project on our favorite application of Mercury Tours, we can just come in here, have many tests. You can expand and really easily you can see what's going on with all of these tests. So this one, for example, has, you know, two actions. This one has just one action, no function libraries. This one has a function library attached. This one has two function libraries attached. This actually came from our frameworks webinar. If you guys missed that, you can go ahead and catch it on our website. It's available there and also on YouTube, of course. 
So that's the solutions explorer. Everything else, we'll go through it little by little. But today, I just wanted you guys to see some of my favorite features. So that is my first favorite feature is that now UFT is very clean and sleek looking. Everything is very easy to navigate. You can kind of, you know, figure out what you need, whether you go to the search function and you can design and then just add your actions. Here you have the run menu and so on and so forth. It's almost the same thing as what the latest version of QTP used to be, but they just changed it up a little. And to me, it's a little bit more user-friendly now. Okay, next feature is that now a very key piece that I think has been missing from QTP for so many years, they finally decided to implement. They finally got smart. I want to give a thumbs up to HP for doing this. Now you can open multiple scripts at once. And that is phenomenal. I can't count how many times I've been frustrated because of this situation and not being able to open multiple tests with QTP. It never made sense to me. Why can't I do it? And now they finally implemented it and it is awesome. So let's take a look at this. So the only key thing that you have to realize is that if you want to be able to open multiple tests, you have to go under the solution and you have to add a new test or you have to, you know, put a test under the solution. You can't just open a test and then over like you can't go here, file open test, and then you can't do another file open test. They have to be under the same solution. That's the only catch. I'm not sure why, but it's a good start. I'm not complaining. So check it out, guys. For example, I have the UFT overview. This is kind of the GUI where you can design tests. This is like the keyword view that used to exist. And here we have the expert view that used to exist. And here's where I can go and begin to design things for the application. Like this, okay? And then I can start doing the stuff with the dictionary. Now, check it out here, guys, as well. This is from one of our Function Fridays, okay? This is this script right here. And here's its action. So this is the GUI overview. This is the actual expert view. And so on and so forth. If I wanted to open up this one, double click it. And now I got this GUI overview. I can open up action one. Here's action one opened up for this script. And now I can easily edit all of these at once. Such a phenomenal feature. I love it. I'm very excited. and. It's been very helpful because what I had to do in the past was I would have to go to the location of the script, open it up in Notepad++, and then I would have to look at scripts and compare and so on. Such a pain. Much better feature now. Next thing that I want to tell you guys about is the debugger. It has been updated. We have gotten some new, very needed features, such as a call stack. And the console pane has always existed, but I think now it's a bit more expanded. So I can show you guys that right now. So for example, if we go to our action here for Function Fridays, and you guys can even see, it will show you the path of the script that you're looking at. The location is here. You can put a description if you want. So this is what we created recently. And I'm just going to play around with it just to show you guys what's going on with the debugger. So let's take a look. First thing you guys want to look down here. We have active screen. That's where the screenshots are going to be shown of what's going on. We have the data table. We have the console view. Let me move it up a little. We have the local variables view, search results. And I want to add some more. If you go to here, view debug. I want to see the call stack. Now, a lot of you may not know what a call stack is. Let me tell you. When one function calls another function that calls another function, it's very good to know the order that these functions were executed in. So, for example, if I had this function in here being called by another function, I want to know which function called this function so that 
you know, for whatever purposes I want to use it for. Usually debugging, changing things up, stuff like that. So this call stack will allow me to see this feature very well. And I think we'll go through something like that for you guys. But first, let me put a breakpoint here and we'll run. And you guys can see right away, it already looks better, right? You guys see this nicely highlighted line. This breakpoint even looks a little bit better. Everything is a lot sleeker looking. So typical stuff, I'm going to run from step as before. It's going to run up until this point. You guys see how it even stops. Very nice looking, very obvious where you are. I like it a lot. And now we can check things out, right? So we can come over here to the local variables. And this will tell us local to whatever's going on, whether it's a function or the action. So in our action, we have these variables that exist. And it's showing me the three. Because, right, I declared three variables here. They are existing. And right now they are empty because there's no values assigned to them except for i. Okay? And these ones will get their values assigned. And let's check out the call stack. Call stack right now is we are in the VB script global code, and that's it. And the console, that's where I can do cool things, such as I can pretty much execute any commands here in the console. So, for example, if I wanted to print something, check it out. My output, my print log is now showing hello from qtpedtutorial.net. If I wanted to set this to something like now, here I would just set this variable to this value. Let's go check it out. If we go into the local variables, check it out. The username, look at its value. The value hasn't even been assigned yet, but I was able to change it through the console. Okay? Uh, there's also the watch, guys. Here, you can add an expression to watch. This is just like what used to exist in QTP. So, for example, Control T is the shortcut key to adding something to a watch. And I love that now they added a shortcut key to a watch because I was always adding variables to watches. And it was always so annoying because you had to do this. Then you had to right click. Then you had to go down here. And you had to click Add to Watch. But now you got a shortcut key. Control T, it'll put it there. And in the watch, we can see this username. If we want, we can select it and we can even edit it. You guys see that? Or we can edit this. We can change this in here, just like before. And then let's go look at the local variables. And now it's changed to test. You guys see that? So modification through the watch and through the console. Now, one thing that I did notice that happened is they took away the IntelliSense that used to come with the watch window, where, for example, if I, you know, put in some object and I would be able to access its methods. Now, I don't think that's an option. Let me show you what I mean. Let's stop it here. And let's go into our UFT overview. Here, I created an object, right? So let's see if I can use it. How am I going to add it to watch? Control T. Oh, awesome. And yeah, do you guys see before what we used to be able to do was put a period here and then we could see all the methods. Now you can't really see all of the methods that this object has which I guess is not too bad because you can still see it here, up here using the IntelliSense. You guys see that? You can see all the methods like this. You used to be able to see it in the watch window. I don't know why they took it away. Maybe there's a reason. Now you can just see everything from the IntelliSense. I have yet to further explore this, but I will keep you guys updated. But that's one thing that I noticed that I am a little bit worried about why they took it away. But let's see how it goes. Okay. So back to our UFT here. Let's go. We were in Function Fridays. Let's do some function calls, actually. Let me take this. I want to show you guys the call stack and how that works. So you guys can utilize it to make yourselves much more efficient. Because call stack is a very normal thing to be tracking 
when you're debugging. You're considered a developer when you're doing this kind of stuff. And if you don't have the typical developer tools, it's kind of crazy to me. So I'm very glad that they added this call stack and all these other features that they did, such as the Solutions Explorer and be able to open multiple scripts at once. That was very excellent. Anyway, so let's call some functions. So this function is being called here. Then I'm going to design one real quick. Okay. And this one is going to call this like that. And then one more. Let's do it like that. So what's going on here? If you're very confused, don't worry because the call stack is here to help you out. Check it out. We can run it. Now we're at this function. The question is what is going to occur? So I'm going to use the typical debugging capabilities that they didn't take those away. So F11 is still, I was able to step into. Now let's go look at our call stack. Check it out guys. So look, VB script is on bottom and now function B is on top. Because what happens with the call stack is whenever something is called, a new function is called, it gets placed on top of the call stack. It's a first in, first out system. So what does that mean? It means that this function is the first one to be called. It's going to be the first one to be removed from the call stack. So if you call another function, which is going to be function A, check it out. Now function A got added to the call stack. So you guys get it? We had the VB script calling function B and function B called function A. And now I think I'm going to get an error because I don't have a function associated with this one. Yeah, check it out. Got an error. But then this function would have gotten called and this function would have been placed on top. So can you guys see like I can easily trace the origin of where this function was called because a lot of times it happens you will have multiple functions calling each other getting very confusing. And before without the call stack, I actually at some point had to sit and create diagrams of what function was calling what function so that I can trace the origin back and then figure out how to solve whatever problem I was working on. So it was a complete pain. But now it's much easier. I hope you guys get what I'm talking about and what's going on here. If not, of course, please leave questions in the comments section. We will get to them ASAP. No worries. So that's the call stack. I showed you guys the local variables that contains everything, all the local variables. Probably should have done that here as well. Let's see some local variables. Anyways, I'm calling this variable testing. And let me show you how to add a function library. Now it's attached piece of cake, right? Hey guys, I just noticed that we're running at 20 minutes already. So I'm going to stop the video and continue in the next session. Thank you guys so much for joining. If you got any questions, feel free to contact us. We're always here to help and I'll see you in the next session.